Hey everybody, welcome to this next LEGO EV3 tutorial. In this ses session, we're going to take a look at data wires. In my previous programs on line follow and things of that sort, I used data wires. Now I want to take a look at it and talk a little bit about how they work and how it can make your lives much more effective. And so one of the things that we need to think about is the most of the blocks that we use in the LEGO EV3 software require information. And that information is data. It's data that we use for the robot, whether we tell it manually or automatically, how to make decisions and, and basically what to do. It leads to that action piece. And so if we were to take a look at a basic motor block, a move block here, and what we do is we are manually adding the action. You know, do I want my robot on for three rotations? on these motors, I'm manually telling my robot this is what it is that I want you to do. But when we start to go over here to this red tab with data, we can start to use some of these functions and the robot can insert the data itself based on the readings that it's gathering. So what we can use are data wires and this will allow us to take the output from one block and use it as an input for another block. So let me explain here what I mean by that. We're going to be doing a program that's really simple um, that's going to do this challenge here. You have a wall. So I've got these beautiful Mario bricks right here and you've got your robot, whatever your robot looks like. This is uh, Twitch uh, for us. What we want to do is write a program, real simple, that the further out the robot is from the wall, using either infrared or ultrasonic, I'll show you both, the faster the motors are going to move. And as it gets closer to the wall, it's going to slow down. And we're going to use that using data wires and based off the readings of our sensors. So how do we do this? What we're going to do is lay out the basic groundwork. And so what we need first is a loop block because the robot's going to be making several decisions over and over again until we get to the point of actually reaching the wall. And so in here is the sensor blocks. Now, the, the beauty of the sensor blocks, it's something that um, I think gets underutilized quite a bit, is they allow us to have the same modes as control as our weight block, you know, our switch block, and our loop blocks. This allows us to put in a lot of output plugs, um, which gives us more control over our robot. So what we're going to do is we're going to use infrared right now. And I'll show you another one here with the ultrasonic, depending on if you have the retail or education set. And what we need to do is we were, we're going to want to measure because we want to get a reading of what the infrared sensor is detecting, and we want it in beacon mode. And so we already have that set up. It's right there. Boom. We are good to go. Obviously, pick your port of what you have it plugged into. And then we want to add a motor block here. So I'm going to move a move steering block. My motors are A and B on my particular robot. You make them accordingly to what you want. And when we put these this motor on, this is what we get. It's going to go straight at a speed of 50. And we want this to kick out as soon as the robot actually touches the wall. So we're going to interrupt this loop block here with a touch sensor. And the state of the touch sensor is going to be 1 as soon as it's pressed. And then obviously you adjust your, your sensor port right here. And for me, it's three. Now, with this going on, nothing is going to happen. The motor is just going to go straight, and it's going to stay at a constant speed of 50 until the robot touches the wall. But we want the speed of the motors to be affected by the distance the robot is away from the wall. So this is where the data block comes in, or, the, or excuse me, the data wire starts to play a nice role. What we do is the following. We can actually just drag this block over and we're going to drag it right on over 
to the motor to the speed here. Now, whatever this sensor is reading, it's going to go here for the speed. So if we're 80 centimeters away, boom, it's going to go 80 speed or 80 power. 20, 20. And as, as soon as it gets closer to the wall, it's going to get slower until it touches, and then boom, it's going to kick out. So let's take a look to see how this looks with our robot. We'll do it one this way, and then we'll do another one with the ultrasonic. Alright, so now that you've seen the robot run with the infrared, we once again switched it to proximity. You can do the same exact thing with ultrasonic. What we have here is we're measuring, we're going to go distance to centimeters. You can do inches as well. We're going to grab that centimeter icon and we just, same properties as you can see above, and we just drag that data wire to do the exact same thing. Now, if you happen to have your robot plugged in, um, to your computer and you actually run the software down here uh, which I don't currently have you can actually hover your mouse cursor over the wire and it'll show and display what the sensor is reading so real simple way on how to use data wires up next we're going to start using some of the data blocks and building into more complex code but for now I at least wanted you to see how to use these wires to make your life easier and allow your robot to do the decision making as opposed to you manually trying to do so.